Welcome to A Game of Ice and Fire, a video series devoted to a song of Ice and Fire war game by Cool Mini or Not. We cover all aspects of the hobby with tactics and list build videos, painting tutorials of varying levels, and battle reports. In this video, we're going to be diving into Night's Watch Heroes Box 1. And at the time of recording of this video, we don't have a solid release date for the Hero Box 1 for Night's Watch or Free Folk. Nothing official has come from Cool Mini or not, so any dates anyone gives you is just baseless speculation. Uh, but we do have the rules for the entirety of both of those boxes. So if you're wanting to look into those and maybe start proxying some things and playing things through on your own before the release happens, you can head on over to a song of ice and fire builder.com that's a s o i a f builder.com and you just build your list like normal and then you can add your commanders as their attachment version or their ncu whichever one it is and then click on their view tactics cards button and that will pull up the entire tactics deck but at the very end of it you'll see the commander's specific cards you can try and jot those down and slip them into a sleeve and start playing with it if you want so I'm of the thought pattern that I think Hero Box 1s really change and further define factions when they come out. Uh, I think that the Lannister and Stark boxes did that extremely well. Uh, the only outlier is the neutral Hero Box 1 because that kind of was what they needed to be a faction in period. So uh, that one doesn't count so much. Maybe Hero Box 2 will change them up a little bit. But with uh, the commanders we get out of here, there's a lot of interest in Othel Yarwick, but the one I wanted to talk about today was Donald Noy, the defender of Castle Black. And uh, while he's a commander, he, is a, he has battlefield presence, so you can attach him to a unit instead of him being an NCU like his uh, normal version is. And the only rule that he comes with is mastercrafted equipment. When you own the coin zone on the tactics board, this unit's attacks gain plus one to hit, and its defense save rolls of six block two hits. So we kind of get this, like, stuck in combat feel from him. Uh, you don't have to worry about sacrificing the charge. I mean, you can kind of take it on the chin with this guy, and uh, the, the six is blocking two hits, kind of like the opposite of critical blow, right? Uh, it really kind of drives him more into this. We're trying to just really hold the... I'm going to say hold the line, and... Uh, and try and cut down that way instead of being hyper-aggressive. So the first card, uh, ironically, that I want to look at for his commander version is Hold the Line. And this is the same uh, rule that the uh, Assault Captain has for Lannister, but it's uh, it triggers when a friendly combat unit be that begins its uh, activation engaged. The unit's melee attacks gain plus one to hit, and they roll plus two dice this turn. So again, we're kind of getting this sense of uh, Donald Noy wants to get into combat and just stick in there and try and fight his way out of it. The next card in his set of three is Defensive Counter. This triggers when an unactivated friendly combat unit is attacked with melee before the attack dice are rolled. The attacker becomes weakened and the attack loses all abilities until the end of the turn. One of the really interesting things about this card that I think most people are going to overlook when they first read it is that attachments that are on the unit are also kind of affected by this because the characteristic of losing the abilities is not from the unit or just the attachment. It's from the attacker, and since the attachment would be considered part of the attacker, they would lose that ability to it as long as, there's an, as, long as they're, they're attributing something to the attack. So that's the way I read it. I'm pretty sure it works that way. But this card is another one that kind of jams home this idea of getting into combat and sticking it out and just tying things up. Because your opponent has, a, for sure, well, more likely than not, will have units that are uh, really stacked with rules. Think of your Knights of Casterly Rock or your Flayed Men. Even opposing uh, Sworn Brothers have tons of rules on them. But all you have to do is... Uh, play this card and then not only does the unit become weakened so even if they're rolling a ton of dice they're not really getting a lot out of it they're also uh not getting any of those abilities so let's think about like uh lance as a rule 
So that's another one that's kind of hidden. If someone charges you with a unit of Knights of Casterly Rock, you trigger this card before they even roll their dice. They will lose all abilities, including the Lance Rule, and that will cause them to roll six dice on the charge instead of that nine that they normally get. So this is this can be devastating depending on what unit you throw it into. And uh, I think it's going to help Donald Noy's army just really survive and go for the long haul. The last card that Donald Noy brings to the Night's Watch army is Bulwark Formation. This triggers at the start of the round. Attach this card to a friendly combat unit until the start of its next activation. While attacked, this unit may not make melee attack actions, but gains plus one to defense save rolls, and its attackers do not gain charge, flank, or rear bonuses uh, against that unit. So this is, uh, again, it's, it's all of his cards are pointed in one direction, and that's survival. I mean, hold the line isn't so much survival, but it helps you get out of things. So bulwark formation can do a couple di can be played in a couple different ways. You can jam a unit in a really like not great position uh, because they might be getting charged on the side or get charged from the front by a couple different enemies. All of that you can put to rest, and it could turn into a good idea because if you play this card, you're not getting any your opponent's not getting any bonuses. Period from any of the normal mechanics of combat like they'll still get their normal weapon benefits and everything but they're not going to get any flank bonuses they won't get their charge bonus they're just kind of and and for most of us we know that w when you're uh, charging into a unit and you don't get those rerolls it kind of hurts i mean you get you get up there a little bit but making sure you hit as many times as possible is uh is really nice especially if you're looking at a unit that might be hitting on fours sometimes threes, uh, not getting that re-roll can be pretty devastating if they end up throwing a really junk roll on the first try. But this on the right unit can take a ton of activations away from your opponent if they just uh, they think that they might be able to go for it and uh, you will be able to survive most of it or just not get wiped by two activations. The other way you can play this card is uh, just to protect a unit that has a really uh, critical objective. Like think of you think you've got your uh, you're playing Dance of Dragons or something, and you've got Donald Noy's unit holding one of the eggs, so you're scoring plus two points, and you want to make sure you don't drop that egg. So you put down Bulwark Formation, and now it's going to be really difficult for your opponent to shake you off of that thing, uh, whether it's trying to kill you off. Um, I mean, if they they could still panic test you and see if you fail it, but for the most part, this is these are the big two uh, times that I would consider playing bulwark formation, or the two ways I would want to play it. So again, I think Donald Noy is really pointed in an obvious direction of he wants to get into the mix of combat and just endure it and attrition the opponent out just through. The, his ability to survive and it's almost like he's kind of a, a flip side coin of Jon Snow not so much that um, Jon Snow is also attrition so they're kind of they're they're adjacent to one another each one of them is about attrition uh, just in different ways Donald Noy wants to survive through defensive capabilities and Jon Snow just keeps bringing a bunch of bodies with him and making sure they don't die so the uh, first thing we have to kind of look at with this is what unit can we put Donald Noy in to uh, maximize his output on the table. So I had first looked at what I think is an obvious call for a lot of people is uh, Veterans of the Watch. Um, there was at one point I decided I was going to try and build a double Veterans unit with Donald Noy, but it gets a little pricey. So... Uh, the thing that I don't like about putting Donald Noy in a unit of veterans is that they, uh, it's a lot of equity to sink into a unit that's already survivable on its own. If you were playing into, or if you were planning to try and have this be like an anti, um, 
Sundering list or something, maybe I could see putting Othal in there to give you back that 3 plus save instead of going down to the 4 plus. Some of your cards will help you out with that, but it is a lot of eggs to put in one basket with the uh, the veterans. So I think for this list's purposes, especially with uh, getting the plus 1 to hit, I'm going to throw in, I'm going to throw Othal, or not Othal, but uh, Donald Noy into a unit of Sworn Brothers. And the, the big reason for that is they've got a decent amount of attacks, and when they're engaged, they kind of want to hit as many as possible. Uh, so getting the plus one to hit on them is going to be really nice. Plus, they don't have the greatest armor in the world. They're, they're pretty middling at that four plus. So getting the ability to uh, block two hits with sixes means that you can kind of forgive some of the other uh, saves that you're going to be... Uh, be losing off of that four plus whereas with the veterans I think putting in Othel or not geez I'm going to keep saying Othel Yarwick but uh, Donald putting Donald Noy in the veterans is kind of like a, a win more strategy I think at least that's my initial impression of it it might be good um, and I'll definitely want to test it out a little bit more but right now I'm kind of liking Donald Noy in the unit of Sworn Brothers so outside of that I kind of want to shift gears a little bit and go into NCUs because I think NCUs for the Night's Watch have become somewhat formulaic in that people just kind of put their prescribed three in and leave it at that. But with Donald Noy, I'm going to switch things up just slightly and uh, I'm bringing 100% Craster and I'm definitely bringing Bowen Marsh, but instead of bringing Amon, I'm going to bring Peter Baelish or Petir Baelish for those discerning folks. Um, the reason being is that I think with Othel, God, Jesus, with Donald Noy's cards, in addition to the rest of the deck, which I think he takes a lot of advantage of, whereas some other commanders might not, I think Bowen Marsh is for sure an auto-include on this one because he can just get us so much card advantage, especially if we aren't taking the... Uh, the tactics pos or the missive position with him. Uh, it means that we can still get the effect of the zone and still dig a little bit deeper into our deck, and uh, especially trying to get more horn that wakes the sleeper so we can recur some of uh, Donald Noy's cards because they are pretty backbreaking, especially if you were to play them back to back. The uh, reason why I've got Craster in here is that. Donald Noy's army is going to need some healing, just not a ton of it. Like, he's not going to need Amon levels of healing because the the gist with that is we're trying to build the list in a way to maximize our survivability through defense saves. So putting Craster in here to get a couple wounds back and a card for our efforts is really where we want to be, whereas Amon seems to heal better the more things that are missing. So we're not looking at trying to watch ranks fall one after another. We're really trying to stick it out, and Amon just might not be able to cut the butter here. The reason for Peter Baelish is that Donald Noy wants the coin zone, and there might be some other elements in this deck that are going to want the coin zone too. And uh, the coin sometimes just isn't that... Uh, that big of a deal to take for us, especially if we're really doing our job well with, or if the list is doing its job well and making sure the defense saves are going off nicely. Uh, we want to make sure that we can own the coin zone without having to take the effect of it. Like maybe we have little finger come down on the coin and then take something like the maneuver or the swords position so that we can smash something through and uh, still get the, the benefits of uh, Donald's card plus uh, a sh the shield that guards the realms of men, which is one we're definitely going to want to try and find ASAP with this list. The more uh, buffs we can get to the defense for this army, the better it'll turn out for us. Moving on to the rest of the list, I did say earlier that veterans seem like a really big no-brainer with Donald Noy because they are kind of the, the defensive brick of the Night's Watch. And we are adding a unit of those to this list, but instead we're going back into, instead of adding Donald Noy to the unit, we're going back into the Hero Box 1, and we're going to be adding in Gren, the Aurochs 
I'm pretty sure that's how you say that to this list. And uh, Gren ends up adding an ability to the veterans that allow them to cut through combat a little bit better. Like, they already roll a ton of dice, they don't degrade very fast, and they hit very well. But sometimes they can just get, if they get the right unit into them, then it's really hard for them to break out. But Gren has the ability called Powerful Blows, where this unit's melee attacks roll plus one die and gain critical blow. So you're able to throw nine dice when you're in, in uh, full ranks with this unit, and uh, critical blow should happen maybe at, le at least one or two times, like statistically, even if you, you don't believe in dice math. And uh, the, the, it makes the unit a lot more dangerous and a little bit more... Uh, adept at getting itself out of sticky situations. I think Gren is an easy take here and offers a little bit more to the veterans of the Night's Watch than what Donald Noy would. The next unit we're going for is a shocker, Sworn Brothers, and this time we're going to be spending the points on adding Jon Snow, his Lord Snow version. And uh, for those of you that haven't, that don't use this very often, uh, as an attachment, Jon Snow brings boldness and courage, the same rule that uh, the attachment version of Jaime Lannister has. And that's when this unit makes a melee attack, it's always treated as having one additional rank, and if it already has full ranks, it gets plus two attack dice. And then he still has the bond with Ghost where he can chain his activation out. So for nine points, we end up having the Sworn Brothers throw nine dice, and then seven dice, and then five. So uh, they, it turns them into a pretty aggressive unit, but with a Donald Noy's cards, we can also make them pretty survivable so they can cut through things. Now imagine adding in uh, his Hold the Line ability, so now we're throwing ten dice that are hitting on twos, and that gets pretty intense. Along with that, we get Ghost, which uh, is... Not extremely important, but it can be helpful if uh, the if you can get Silent Predator to uh, proc when um, when you really need it to, like before your enemy wants to like try and punch into something. If you can get the drop on them and get Ghost in there first, it's just a nice way to also clear through some other units and trigger panic checks and all that. So Ghost is just a good direwolf, and uh, Jon Snow brings a really relevant ability to the Sworn Brothers that will kind of help them survive, at least feel like they're surviving, if they aren't uh, putting out uh, the really good defense saves with Donald Noy's cards. Points-wise, we kind of get into this weird spot where we don't have quite enough to get some of the other things that I might want in here. I really did want to fit in a unit of uh, ranger hunters, or ranger trackers, the, ho the horse ones. Ranger trackers, I think, are the ones on horses. Um, the reason for that is the... Uh, I kind of wanted to use this as a um, an armor-breaking list, so getting uh, the ranger trackers in here to use their uh, mark target ability would be really nice, but I'm only sitting at five points, and I've already kind of used all of the three-point attachments I can, and I really don't think that it's worthwhile to drop Gren down to a uh, a lesser attachment or do something like drop Jon Snow down to a Night's Watch recruiter, or not Night's Watch recruiter, a, uh, a Night's Watch captain. So with the five points, I've decided to add in conscripts. And these, this is a unit where I think people are using the attachment that came with them more so than the unit. The uh, the reason being for getting something in here like this is it is a cheap activation to put on the table. I mean, it's it's technically only one point more than Ghost is for the free activation. But the uh, we're going to be taking the coin zone a lot or wanting to be putting a lot of emphasis on taking the coin zone with this list. So we can, we'll be more likely to have the re reinforcements ability go off with the conscript. So we're not too worried about their bad defense save or their bad morale. Uh, they're still have throwing seven dice, hitting on fours. Uh, the, when they degrade, it's not so great, but they do get to do reinforcements when they activate. So you can try and you know fill up a rank really easily with that. Um, the other thing is, since we have that one point extra, I am throwing a Night's Watch recruiter in there, and uh, he is. I think the Night's Watch recruiter is one of the more egregious attachments that we've. Uh, seen come up in the game so far. I think Forced Conscription is an obscenely powerful ability, more so on Sworn Brothers, 
where uh, they're more likely to kill something, and they also have a decent enough morale check or, or morale stat to where they'll be passing it regularly. Now, half of that we're really not going to get much of any use out of on the conscripts, but uh, it is likely that they'll be able to take down a body with them, so they'll be able to pull back a little bit there. And the, uh, the real reason for this, or not reason, but more so justification for this list being in here, or this unit being in this list, is that everything in here, along with Othel's cards and abilities, is going to be extremely difficult to dislodge. So the conscripts kind of serve as a really cheap distraction for your opponent. It might force some of their NCUs to take the crown zone and try to zap them instead of taking an important zone or trying to take away the coin from us if they're not really catching it that we're really utilizing the coin zone a lot on here. Also, it could divert some, uh, some units over to the conscripts to just try and take them out really quickly. Uh, so you, if you, you just have to play them correctly and not put them into a position where you can give them up for nothing. But I do think this unit is going to survive a lot more than what people give it credit for, especially just being able to automatically restore three wounds when you activate if you've got that coin zone beforehand. And as long as Littlefinger's taking the zones that he needs to, I don't think it'll be too difficult for this unit to get that. So that rounds out the list, and I think that the the general idea of it, I mean, you see the veterans, double sworn brothers, and then some other junk in here, and it kind of feels like the same boiled down Night's Watch list, but I think this one for sure is one where you can't argue too much that Jon Snow would just be a better commander with this list, because we're definitely leaning into a lot of what uh, Donald Noy is good at, and uh, just kind of taking Night's Watch in a different direction. I mean, it's still trying to survive and kill your opponent off the table, but you're just doing it in a different way. So if your opponent's trying to uh, plan for Night's Watch somehow by doing something that's more meant to take out Sworn Brothers, uh, it's they're going to be a little bit surprised by Donald Noy and that he helps them survive a little bit more, and uh, especially if they're... Um, not really planning on seeing some really defensible veterans with a really powerful attack on them. So let me know if you get this list together and, and play a couple games with it. Tell me how it worked out for you in the comments below. Uh, you can s throw down any other thoughts you might have had about Donald Noy if you're going a different direction. Again, I, I have a list in the back of my head for the double veterans list, which I think would be really fun, but I just haven't put it down yet. Um, although this one I think is a pretty good time and I if you're trying to get a little bit of a, a mix up with the uh, Night's Watch I think this is a an interesting direction to go where you can still play what you want to in the way that you want to so you can take a lot of the things you learn from playing Jon Snow time and time again and put them to work with this list.